Welcome back. Now, the discourse on possible foreign exchange devaluation is continuing. The latest of recent insight that have been provided is coming from analysts from Vativa Capital Management, who released the foreign exchange macro notes last week on policy stance to ensure short-term stability. Now, joining us now to provide more insight and to contribute to the ongoing discussion on appropriate pricing of Nigeria's foreign exchange is an economist at Vativa Capital, Mushokwe Arubaye. Many thanks for joining us on the program, Mushokwe. First, let's get your take on the January inflation numbers released this morning by the National Bureau of Statistics. Okay, um, we've, it doesn't come as a surprise that we saw a further increase in inflationary pressure in January. Um, we've seen it um, increase gradually from September to up, up until January when it, when it came in at 12.13%. Um, the continuous rise in inflation is driven majorly by the closure of the land borders, which was implemented sometime last year to abate the smuggling of rice and, and other goods. Overall, we feel the steeper rise in inflation for January is as a result of the unfavorable base effect in the corresponding period last year. And this has also accentuated, intensified the um, impact of the gaps in domestic supply and its impact on prices. Hence, we're seeing prices, hence, we saw prices in January rise at a faster pace than it did in, in, in the same period of last year. Now, despite the central bank's efforts to maintain its inflation targeting by constant mobbing up of excess liquidity in the system, inflation rate has remained in the double digit. Do you see an end to this uptrend? Well, yes, in 2020, I see an end to this uptrend. Maybe we would not get within the central bank's target, but we would see in inflation decelerate towards the um, second half of the year. I expect that inflation would peak in, in April. In the build-up to that, we should see in inflation intensify on the back of a number of factors. We have the VAT implementation, we ki which kicked off, we took effect this month. It should put um, some more upward pressure on inflation for February. We also have the um, impending increase in electricity tariffs, which is due to take, um, kick off in, in April. So all that on the back of the unfavorable um, base from 2019 should keep inflation elevated over the next three to four months. But as we progress into the year, possibly the sec most likely the second half of, of the year, we should see inflation gradually decelerate as the base from 2019 becomes favorable and food prices moderate in response to harvest. We know that the food price index constitutes 50% of the headline index. So the direction of food prices is a good indicator of the direction of the headline index. So, yes, I expect that inflation will moderate towards the second half of the year. But overall, for 2020, I would, due to the balance of risks that we have to inflation currently, pressure from um, pressure on the first half due to um, base effect, and then price momentum increases from electricity tariffs and and the application of the new VAT rate, I would expect average inflation for 2020 to inch higher in 20. To, to inch higher to an average of 12.5% this year compared to an average of 11.4%, which we saw last year. Now, to, to what extent do you think monetary policy has a role to play in taming inflation? Um, so far, I think the um, liquidity management role, which the central bank has, um, has taken, is, is a good one, and I expect that they will continue in that capacity because it's a key mandate for them to ensure that prices are stable in the economy. So it's critical for them to ensure that liquidity levels are not putting upward pressure on the exchange rate, and that will now filter into inflation, given that the Nigerian economy is, um, is import-dependent. So I'd expect them to continue with the liquidity management strategy, which they, which they are currently adopting, rather than opting to raise the um, benchmark interest rate because raising the NPR will be counterproductive to the various efforts which they're embarking on to in increase lending to the private sector. Now, speaking about the exchange rate and the central bank, 
You and your team released a note last week on policy stands for short-term stability. How precarious is the current uh, situation of evaluation of the Naira, which you alluded to in your report? Um, by, in my opinion, by all um, reasonable measure, the Naira is overvalued. However, I, I feel that the calls for a devaluation are probably too soon because I, I do not, we do not think that the situation is as, um, is as, is as precarious as, as we make it seem. So what do we stand to benefit from a devaluation if it eventually, if, if, if it were to happen right now? Yes, we're going to attract foreign investment. And this would give room for the CBN to be able to lower the, um, the NPR because, I mean, we've already, they don't need to keep NPR higher to be able to attract investors anymore. And this would also stimulate, the, um, this will also stimulate economic growth uh, as it will be transmitted onto lower lending rates to the private sector, which is very good. Also, a devaluation at this, at this point in time, when, when, you, when you say you're devaluing your currency, it basically means that your exports will become cheaper in the global market compared to exports from other countries. So you become more competitive in the global market. Now, zooming in on that advantage, we, let's look at um, our bucket of exports, our basket of exports. Our exports basically majorly consist, is, consist of oil, crude oil, and the price of which is determined by the dynamics in the global oil market. So currently, a devaluation of the Naira would not have an impact on making our oil export cheaper and more competitive in the global market because the price at which we're able to sell oil in the global market is determined by, is determined by dynamics in the global market. It's out of our control. Also, if we were to do a devaluation... Sorry? No, go ahead, Moshepe. Did you say something? Go ahead. Okay. Then if we were to take out... Okay, if we were to take out um, crude oil from a basket of um, exports, we'll be left with extractives, majorly from the agriculture sector, some of which we are currently disadvantaged at from the standpoint of cost efficiency. We're not able to produce some of these agricultural products cost, ef cost efficiently because of um, infrastructure challenges peculiar to us compared to some of our competing countries who also produce this... Um, um, agricultural products. And there's also the quality standpoint where we're not able to meet global um, quality standards for some of these products. Therefore, we're disadvantaged in that end. So there's only little a devaluation would do at this point to improve our competitiveness in the global market in terms of pricing. That's looking at the benefits, analyzing what's the possible benefits from a devaluation and how it impacts us. Now let's move to the cost angle. From the cost perspective, a devaluation at this time would mean manufacturers would pay more in narrow terms for their import of raw materials. We know that margins in that sector are currently low and they operate in a price-sensitive market. So a devaluation now can force a lot of them out of business and um, forcing them out of business because they're not able to absorb the shocks that could, would arise from a devaluation at this point in time. Also, at the national level, a devaluation now will mean we'll be paying more in narrow terms to service our foreign debts. Last year, where exchange rate was relatively stable, we saw that the, de the budget deficit was in excess of $4 trillion. So imagine what would happen if we had to commit more of our already weak earnings to servicing existing debts. The deficit would obviously be wider if we have to meet um, capital expenditure spending, which is necessary to stimulate growth in the economy. Remember, I also mentioned that the, an advantage is attracting a foreign, um, advantage of devaluation is attracting foreign um, investment. But what we should also note is that we will most likely be attracting foreign portfolio investment rather than foreign direct investments because the environment is the, the policy di um, the direction, government uncertainty in the policy environment, direction of government policy. Has, has been uncertain for a period of time and does not provide like firm confidence in the economy for foreign direct investors to bring in money. So what we'll be able to achieve if we were to devalue the Naira now is ease pressure in the short term 
but in the long run, we're still exposed to volatility in the oil market, which will also resume pressure on the Naira at that time. We're also exposed to fluctuations in global interest rates because we're, what will be attracting at this point in time would be more of foreign portfolio investments. All right, looking at your note, Moshebe, you said that foreign exchange pressure is still tolerable, judging by foreign exchange pressure indices. What exactly are you driving at here? Yes. Okay, so there's, um, there's a, an index which looks at key um, foreign exchange market variables, like the exchange, the exchange rates, the um, interest rate, as well as the level of the um, external reserves. So the rate at which those variables are changing on a year-on-year -year basis signals, su suggests the level of pressure that the, um, that the foreign exchange markets or the central bank could be experiencing in a period, in a period where there is, where there is calls for de um, devaluation. In that note, you will see that prior to 2017, there was intense pressure in the market. But following the introduction of the INE window, the pressure has eased considerably. And even though we are, even though we are seeing um, slight pressure in the market, of course, all prices are lower. Our main source of forex is, is oil. And the, oh, the CBN recently, up until recently, was under allotting to foreign portfolio investments. So we're seeing um, some of, uh, a bit of pressure from outflow of some foreign portfolio investments. All that trickled down into, foreign ex um, into the foreign exchange market putting pressure on the Naira. But the pressure on the Naira and the CBN currently is not as intense as it was back then um, in 2016, 2017, that warranted for a devaluation at that time. All right, Mushokwe, you also claim in that report that the pressure... was trying to highlight. All right, so you also claim that the pressure we're seeing now is not as blown out as what we recorded in pre-recession when exactly should we expect the worst in terms of FX pricing? Yes. I didn't get the last question. I was saying that also in that report, you, uh, you guys at Vertiva Capital mentioned that the pressure we are seeing now is really not as much as what we saw before the recession. So the question is, when exactly, at what point should we expect yes, the worst in terms of FX pricing? Okay, the truth is the FX market is very dynamic and today all prices are low. Tomorrow you can see all prices higher and foreign investors are, are, are confidence in our economy is being restored gradually and so we can see inflow of foreign investments. So more, most of the time I like to look at the foreign, the foreign exchange market and pricing in the market on the short term. But the truth is, yes, even though reserves seem to be adequate at the moment, we're still vulnerable at this point. However, there needs to be long-term measures put in place because we've been borrowing over the course of the years, to sh the past few years, to shore up the reserves. At some point, those external obligations will fall due. A lot of things can happen between now and then when the external obligations will fall due. So that's why I try not to look at the foreign exchange markets, have so much of a long-term view about the foreign exchange market. Take, for example, earlier in the year, there was no communication about the fact that we were going to, even though everybody had already expected it, but there was no firm communication from the government that we're going to go back to the euro bond market this year. But two weeks ago, we've been hearing conversations about how the euro bond is going to happen, most likely in the first half of the year and they're going to raise $3.3 billion, which should obviously show up the reserves level in, in, in the short term and increase the capacity of the CBN to continue defending the Naira over the course of the year. But what happens next year or over the next 5, 10, 30 years when all these obligations which we're borrowing fall due and we have not been able to increase our foreign exchange earning capacity over that period to be able to meet those obligations? So right now, I cannot particularly say in the, at what point in the long term when a devaluation is going to happen, because I also know that the government is doing a lot of things at the moment to try and see how they can um, improve domestic production of certain things. The Minister of Agriculture um, earlier in the year had already said they're looking to increase um, 
rice production and also look at exporting in, 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 in the next few years. So how that is going to work, if we start exporting rice, we'll also be earning foreign exchange. Although the mechanics of how that will be implemented hasn't been communicated, but it's something that is doable. So that's why I try not to have like so much of a long-term view on FX. But in the short term, over the next 12 months, it is unlikely we're going to have a devaluation. Okay. Now, looking at your report um, as well, you noted there that while the central bank has been able to tame the growth in FX utilization from tangible imports, invisibles have been contributing significantly to the growth in FX utilization. Are you suggesting a shift in the structure of FX utilization? Well, I'm, I, I mean, the data from the CBN confirms that, um, that um, the financial sector has been using more of, um, more of the FX um, over the um, post-recession. And the reason for this can also be attributed to the fact that there, is, um, there are import restrictions currently, mostly currently on um, tangible goods, which suggests why we've not seen a significant um, growth in FX utilization, and that is now making it skewed to the fact, uh, skewed to the financial sector. Also, we know that fin the financial sector use, utilizes FX to settle international, international payments, international transactions, uh, uh, and the rest. They also trade in FX, so that could be the reason why the contribution, the utilization of FX has increased post recession. Import um, restriction on imp import restriction on tangibles in place, and also the increased use of um, foreign exchange for trading over the last few years by, by the financial sector. Now, uh, the CBN and the FMDQ have introduced a five-year forward contract. Now, what do, do you think that this will help to stabilize the Naira in the long run? Um, I feel it's a step in the right direction um, because, truth be told, the, we're only... What is keeping the Naira at this point is, is FPIs through the, um, OMO, the OMO market. But in the, we, we, need, we, need, we need a situation whereby we have inflows that are more stable. So the introduction of this forward contract would mean that investors who hitherto had um, concerns about exchange rate risk can come into the market and hedge against those risks. And that means we would be able to have FX flows that sit for longer rather than just go as fast as, and rather than attract flows that go as fast as they come. In as much as I feel this is, this is a step in, in the right direction, we should also not lose focus of what needs to be done for us to be able to achieve um, long-term stability in the foreign exchange market, and that is increasing the value and quantity of our non-oil exports. Currently, we still rely on oil for our foreign exchange earnings, and oil earnings going forward the, is, the outlook for, for the forward oil earnings is downbeat, considering what's going on in the oil market. That means that going forward, we're probably going to realize more foreign exchange from oil. But if we're able to improve, we are able to add value to our existing exports, scale up from exporting commodities to slightly um, process, pr processed um, goods, and also increase the quality of our current exports such that it meets international standards then we'll be able to compete favorably in the, in, in the global market against, with exports from other countries and attract the much-needed foreign exchange. This, I believe, is beyond the scope of the central bank. It's not the central bank's job to do that. That is why the government has to intensify efforts to making sure that they deliver strategic fiscal outcomes that will complement ongoing um, monetary policy initiatives by the central bank that has been directed towards stimulating economic growth and stabilizing prices in the economy. So they should be able to nip um, insecurity in the board so that it, particularly in states that are um, agricultural produce that, that at the heart of agricultural production, such that the interventions that the CBN has been um, pumping into, into the agricultural sector would reflect at the, end of, at the end of the day. They've been pumping so much money over the last few years and, and, and the productivity of the agricultural sector has just been 2%. When they were not pumping so much money, you had the agricultural sector do as much as 3, 3.5, 4%. So I feel there are a number of things that need to be addressed 
We need to see more fiscal outcomes. We need to see results for all the money we've been borrowing and spending. And these results should be things that will complement ongoing efforts for us to be able to achieve long-run stability. All right, Mr. Okwe, I know that you have a lot to be said. Of course, we'll continue this conversation some other time, but we do have to take a moment on the program. Many thanks indeed for coming on the program. Mushakwe Arubai, Economist at Vertiva Capital. Well, when we return in just a moment, we'll do an open call to the markets. Please stay with us. Thank you.